How's it going guys, it is Panjano here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for World of Warcraft Shadowlands. This video is going to be helping you achieve the best gameplay experience possible by reducing any lag and micro stuttering you might be experiencing alongside increasing your FPS and overall stabilizing the FPS for the best gameplay experience possible whilst maintaining a great visual fidelity. As always guys, if you guys do enjoy this video, please do leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. Alongside let me know of your tips, tricks or results in the comment section down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. With all that said and done, let's get straight on into the video. To kick things off, we're first of all going to be ensuring that we're running on the latest update to Windows 10, as the World of Warcraft Shadowlands client actually supports the DirectX 12 API, which is heavily optimized with the latest versions of Windows 10. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side once again, click on the Windows key, type in check for updates just like so, click on the check for updates utility. Once inside of it, navigate over to the check for updates tab, click this once. This will then deliver you all available updates to all programs and operating systems installed to your PC, and it's recommended to go through and allow all of these updates to be applied. We can now go ahead and actually optimize the Battle.net or Blizzard launcher itself to ensure that it's not soaking up resources in the background. Simply open up the Battle.net launcher, navigate over to the top left hand side, click on the Blizzard logo. Go down to settings, we're going to be ensuring that allow multiple instances of Battle.net is unchecked. We're then going to go down to when I launch a game, we're going to set this to exit Battle.net completely. We're then going to proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom where you'll be finding advanced settings and we're going to ensure that the use browser hardware acceleration when available option is actually unchecked. Once the launcher is reopened, we can then apply some application fixes to World of Warcraft itself. This is very simple and easy to do. Navigate over to the World of Warcraft page with inside of the launcher, navigate over to options, then go down to show in Explorer. Navigate down to the World of Warcraft launcher.exe, right click, navigate down to properties, go to compatibility, ensure that disable full screen optimizations has been checked, navigate down to change our DPI and override the high DPI scaling behavior performed by. Press OK, apply and OK. We're then going to repeat that optimization once again by going inside of the underscore retail underscore folder, then navigating down to wild exe right clicking once again properties compatibility disable full screen change our DPI, override high DPI, okay, apply, and okay. We can then go ahead and ensure that all of our Windows settings are set correctly to optimize towards performance with inside of Warcraft. For this, navigate down to the bottom left-hand side, click on the Windows button, type in game space mode, then click on game mode settings. With inside of here, navigate down to the game mode option and ensure that game mode is switched on. We can then go ahead and exit out. We can once again navigate down to the bottom left-hand side, this time typing in GPU space settings and clicking on graphics settings. Now, depending on the hardware in which you're running on your system and if this option is supported, you'll have the option titled Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. If you do have this option available to you, make sure that this option is turned on. Whilst we're applying some more optimizations to the Windows operating system itself to further tailor performance towards gaming applications and other heavy workloads, another recommended and fantastic optimization to apply would be to go to the bottom left hand side once again, click on the Windows button, this time typing in Reg Edit just like so. Once you've done that, the Windows Registry Editor will then open up. To start off, navigate up to the left hand side to HG Local Machine, double click. Then navigate down to Software. Once inside of Software, we're then going to proceed to scroll down to the M section, find Microsoft, navigate all the way down to the W section this time and we're going to be looking for the Windows NT folder. Double click on Windows NT, double click on current version. With inside of here, scroll down to M once again to Multimedia, double click on Multimedia, then click on System Profile once. Once inside of System Profile, navigate up to the top right hand side, double click on System Responsiveness. Before changing this value, it's worthwhile taking a quick note as to what this value currently is before we change it, in case you want to change it back for any reason. We're then going to be changing this to a value of 1. Once it's been changed, press OK. Navigate back over to System Profile on the left hand side this time, double click, then go down to Tasks, double click, then navigate down to Games. Starting off with GPU Priority, setting this to a value of 8, then going down to Priority, setting this to a value of 6 then pressing OK, and we can then go ahead and exit out of the Windows Registry Editor as the optimization has been applied. Now that we've ensured our Windows is up to date and we've applied some basic Windows optimizations and Windows settings, we can now go ahead and boot into the game to finalize our in-game options and tweak them for the best performance. Once you've booted into your game, it's then recommended to go ahead and press Escape, navigate up to System, and we can start off with our in-game options. Now, if you're looking for the best performance possible and you don't care how the game looks and you simply want every single frame possible to you, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pretty much turn everything to the lowest option possible or off. And the same goes for you that are looking to keep the best graphics options available to you. The options in which I'm going to be showcasing next are going to be my recommended options if you're wanting the best performance possible whilst maintaining a good level of visual fidelity for a fantastic balanced experience, helping you achieve the best FPS possible. We're going to start off with display mode, ensure this is set to full screen windowed, full screen size should be set to default, anti-aliasing is going to be recommended to have switched to none, unless you really need anti-aliasing, go with FXAA low or FXAA high. Vertical sync is recommended to have disabled for everyone, then navigating down 
down to texture resolution quality. I'm going to be setting mine to fair, spell density is going to be set to half, projected textures are going to be enabled, view distance is going to be set to 5, environment detail is going to be set to 3, and ground clutter is also going to be set to 5. Shadow quality is going to be set to good, but for those of you on relatively lower end systems you might want to go with low. Liquid detail is going to be set to fair, sun shafts are going to be set to low if you wish to have them, but if you do want the best FPS possible go with disabled. Particle density is going to be set to fair, SSAO is going to be disabled, depth effects are going to be set to good, and outline mode is also going to be set to good. Once all of those settings have been changed, go to the bottom right hand side and apply those changes. Once we're done with inside of there, we can then navigate up to the advanced tab. Starting off with triple buffering, turn this off. Texture filtering should be set to anisotropic eight times. Ambient occlusion type, I'd recommend keeping this to auto detect. MSAA should be set to none. Multi-sample alpha test, disabled post-process AA, none. Resample quality, none. Graphics API. For most of you watching, DirectX 12 is going to be giving you the best stable FPS possible. But if you are running on relatively older hardware, you may find better results going with DirectX 11. So at the end of this video, when you do boot the game for the final time when you're actually playing it, keep it at DirectX 12, change it to DirectX 11 and see if your FPS improves and see which one works best for your system. I'm going to be going with DX12. Physics interaction should be set to player only, but if you do want the best FPS possible, go with none. Then navigating down to graphics card, ensure that you take this off of auto detect and set this to your highest end graphics card available on your system. For some laptop users you may see two options with inside of here, ensure that you go with your higher end graphics card. With inside of the top right hand side you can choose to cap your FPS if you wish to do so. I'd recommend setting a cap for your max background FPS to about 30 or 15. Max foreground FPS, this is going to be the FPS cap you're going to be seeing in the game whilst you're playing it. For the most part I'd actually recommend turning this off unless you have a PC which is prone to overheating issues or in general runs rather hot. For me I'm going to be keeping this uncapped and target Target FPS is going to be checked. We're then going to be setting target FPS to our minimum desired FPS. So if you never want to be dropping below 60 frames per second, set this to 60. If you don't want to be dropping below 100, set it to 100. For me, I'm going to be setting this to 120. Contrast, brightness, and gamma can be set to anything you wish to do so. They have no effect on performance and our personal preference. Once that's all been changed, go ahead and press apply once again. We can then go ahead and press OK and go back inside of the game. We're then going to go ahead and press Ctrl and R on our keyboard, which will then open up an in-game FPS counter at the bottom. We're then once again going to be pressing a Escape, going to System, navigating back to the Graphics tab, and we're then going to be changing our resolution scale. I'd recommend starting off with 100%, but if you aren't quite happy with the FPS you're getting, we can start off by lowering this to about 83, pressing Apply, seeing how the game looks, and continue to lower this number lower and lower until we find the happy balance of performance and visual fidelity. The lower the resolution scale, the worse the game is going to look, but the better your performance should be. That number is going to be completely unique to you and your personal preference, so do tweak around with that option. Once you're completed, go ahead and press OK. We can then go ahead and exit out. After you've installed the latest graphics card driver updates for your PC, we now need to go ahead and ensure that we have the best settings set up for the graphics card drivers for the best performance. For NVIDIA users, right click, open up the NVIDIA control panel. Once inside of the NVIDIA control panel, navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Check the option for use advanced 3D image settings, press apply. Navigate over to the left hand side once again to manage 3D settings this time. What we're then going to go ahead and do is simply pause the video, copy all of the settings in which is shown, and then going to proceed to scroll down, pause the video once again, and repeat that process until all of the settings in which are shown have been applied to your NVIDIA graphics card. Once you've set up all of those settings, navigate to the bottom right hand side once again and press apply. Down. And for those of you running on an AMD Radeon card, you'll also want to right click on your desktop, open up inside of the Radeon settings panel, with inside of it navigate over to the global graphics tab, and once again copy all of the settings which have been shown on screen now, copy all of the settings and once everything has been set up to match what's being shown right now, press apply and we're then good to continue on. This now leads us on to some of the closing optimizations with inside of this video. To start off with these we're going to be navigating to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows button once again, typing in power space plan. Click on edit power plan with inside of here, navigate up to the navigation bar at the top, then click on power options. With inside of here, navigate down to the show additional power plans tab. We're then going to be setting up the best and most optimal power plan for our system, depending on whether or not we're running on an AMD Ryzen based processor or an Intel based processor. For those of you running on an Intel based system, you want to be going with the default high performance power plan and select it just like so. For those of you running on an AMD Ryzen based system, you want to be going with any of the AMD Ryzen specific power plans and which should be available to you. You may not have high performance, in some cases you may just have balanced or normal, but just make sure that you're selecting an AMD Ryzen specific power plan. Once that's been selected, we can then go ahead and exit out. We can then apply a very quick yet effective optimization for any of you that use Discord whilst playing. If you do use Discord, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the user settings cog. We're first of all going to be going over to overlay, but inside of it it's then recommended to go up to the top and disable the in-game overlay for Discord. We can then navigate to the bottom left hand side once again to appearance, then proceed to scroll down all the way to the bottom. 
system. You'll then see an option titled Hardware Acceleration. For those of you running on medium to high end PCs, it's recommended to actually switch this option off like I have. For those of you running on low end to ultra low end PCs, it's recommended to keep this option on. Once that's then been set, we can then go ahead and minimize out of Discord. This now leads us on to the last, final, and arguably one of the most important optimizations within inside of this entire video. This is an extremely safe, simple to use two in one optimization program. The first part of the program is going to help maintain a clear pool of RAM in the background whilst you're playing games so you do not run into any excess stuttering or bottlenecks from RAM caps. The second part of the program comes in the form of the timer resolution application. This is a fantastic, easy to use tool which can lower the input latency between the game, operating system, and the hardware you have installed to your PC, leaving you with much better FPS and a much snappier, faster, and more responsive feeling game. Simply navigate inside of the description down below to the ISLC or Intelligent Stumble is Cleaner link. Simply scroll all the way down to the bottom to the official download here. Once the program is downloaded in the bottom left hand side, go ahead and open this up. For me, I'm using 7-zip, so I'm going to extract this to my desk. Once the folder has appeared on your desktop, simply open up the folder. Simply open up the program just like so. Come down to the first box and ensure that this is set to 1024. We then need to navigate down to the second box, and this needs to be set to roughly half of our overall system memory. You can see all available total system memory here at the top. For me, that's 32,000, so half of that is going to be about 16,000. We can then navigate over to the right hand side to enable enable custom time resolution, go to the wanted time resolution box, remove the value within side of here and set the value to 0 0.50. In the bottom right hand side, go down to ISLC polling rate, set this to 500 for high to medium end PCs and for medium end to low end PCs, set this to 1000. Click on start, then click on purge standby list. I'd recommend running this program in the background whenever you're playing any demanding games whatsoever. All there is left to do now is to simply boot into the Battle.net launcher, never get over to play and enjoy our highly optimized brand new experience. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate FPS increase guide for World of War. Warcraft Shadowlands. Again, if you are happy with the results that you've received and have enjoyed the video, please do leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. Also, let me know of your results, questions, queries, tips, or tricks in that comment section down below. And again, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button and the bell notification to be updated instantly whenever a new video goes live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Pangino, and I'll see you in the next one.